This is a cool plant though, right? This is a sandpaper field. <clears throat> this is a plant that, um, this is a plant that come from up north and they put a couple of specimens in the gardens here and from here, like bats and stuff have eaten it and spread it everywhere. <laughs> the reason they call it sandpaper fig is like, feel that, the leaves. That's a better one. Mm. What's nice too is see the way that grows the fruits. You can eat these as well when they, when they ripen up. <clears throat> it's an acquired taste, right? But um, yeah, just like any figs. The thing about figs I, I find fascinating is that every fig has got its own unique relationship with a wasp, okay? A symbiotic relationship. So they both have to live at the same time. And um, <clears throat> that's the fruit that comes out yeah, in the, the front there. That's it, right? Now the fruit, well technically, right, fig, these things on figs aren't fruits, they're flowers, all right? And the way the, the symbiosis works is that <clears throat> Each fig has its own species of wasp that live in there, okay? And they do the job of pollination, okay? And the, the fig can't um, have viable seeds produced without these tiny little wasps, okay? And what's cool about them is that, you know, these wasps, they're t they are tiny, tiny little things. The only way you can really see them sometimes is the, the shine of their, their, their wings, you know? And um, <clears throat> it's a good, it's a good, um, it's a good metaphor for culture, you know. The wasp is as important to the fig as the fig is to the wasp, and and you know, uh, traditionally in culture, you know, Aboriginal people, the country is, is important to me as I am important to the country, okay, and my interaction with it and my, my kinship with it, you know, like land management, things like that. But um, yeah, they're they're a beautiful plant. Just you know, I'd have one of these in my garden just to grow, like just to see them grow off the trunk like that because they're fascinating. But the leaves were used for, um, there's a sign that says people would sand things down. I haven't read anything about people actually using these to sand things, right? But I have read that people would use these for derm abrasion, right? If they had, um, you know, they had nasty bites, sandfly bites, they would rub the hell out of it, get all the, yeah, you know, the, the white blood cells coming up. It feels and good. then, yeah, treat it with, you know, the soap of that acacia we're just talking about. That's, you know, it's antibacterial. You know what I mean? Or, if you've got a nasty shelling you can't get hold of, you can grab it with that, you know, and get a, a grip of it and pull it out. Like Velcro? Yeah, like Velcro. But, um, they're cool plants. There's, um, <clears throat> what's interesting is, we'll come down this way. <clears throat> There's plants in this garden that have been brought here from all over the world. It's like a, like a, um, it's like a zoo for plants. Or, or more specifically, it's, it's, um, it's more like a Victorian trinket box in a museum. Right, it sort of is like that, okay, and um, there's a beautiful fig, we'll go past it, we'll come down this way, there's a beautiful fig over the other side, it's called the dinner plate fig, it's got leaves on it like about that round, right, and because it come over here from Africa as a juvenile with no wasps with it, right, it'll forever never have viable seeds, it'll just grow the like, grows big nasty looking figs off it, but it'll never have a, a viable seed because the wasps don't take up in other you know what I mean? In other, in other places. <clears throat>